Mitch Pilser is a farmer who happens to live in the ancient village of Tsipori in northern Israel. It's an idyllic site, perfect for the bed and breakfast cabins he's built in the midst of the biblical town of Jesus' grandparents and also the seat of notable rabbinical sages. In 2009, Mitch was digging in his backyard to build a pool and made an amazing discovery. I'm a farmer. Uh, unfortunately, beneath my fields, there are the uh, graves of many of the greatest rabbis of antiquity. While I was pulling some stones away from the wall right over here, I came up with this uh, cave over here, this burial cave, which had this exquisitely carved stone door uh, that was closed on the front that said, this is the grave of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. It turns out that this rabbi was a colorful character who lived here in the 3rd century and whose commentaries appear in the Talmud. But legend also has it that he was a close friend of Elijah the prophet. When word got out, Mitch's property became a pilgrimage site for religious Jews who believe there's something special about it. There's a legend that he entered whole into the Garden of Eden. And some of the wise men say that his body stayed here, but his soul went there. So we have a place that is an opening to the Garden of Eden. The Israel Antiquities Authority was not so enthusiastic and charged Mitch with carrying out an illegal dig and damaging antiquities. They got a court order to dig on the property and confiscated the inscribed headstone door. And when they went in here and they dug it, they decided they liked the door so much that they pulled it off the hinges and took it away and it sits now in a storeroom in uh, Beit Shemesh. In the meantime, Mitch Pilser was in Nazareth fighting the charges against him and demanding that the stone be returned to its original site. The fate of the stone has yet to be determined, but the court of Nazareth behind me has to decide now whether or not Mitch Pilser is going to be convicted of destroying an ancient site. The charges are, are simply uh, an excuse for them not to return the stone. They know that according to the law, eventually they do have to return the stone because I've prepared a spot for it. But they, they do want, they want to claim that if they can somehow indict me and convict me for a crime of archaeology, of illegal digging, then they will be able to say we can't return the stone to this place because this man has been convicted of, a, of, of illegal digging, so it's not responsible for, to return it. Still, the case has drawn the attention of not only the media, but brought out an unusual visitor, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi himself, or at least that's who he said he was. <laughs> After some 1,800 years, I've been privileged to have a chance to show myself again in this world. Finally, there are worthy people who are living in a house above my grave and taking care of the place, so I thought it would be a good time to reveal the tomb to the public. We always understood that somebody is watching over us, and we believe it's this Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi who's watching over us, so we have the obligation to watch over him as well, and that's why we're obligated to do everything we can to return the stone. Whether or not the door comes back here remains to be seen. But if you believe the legends, one thing is for certain is that the tomb of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi could be the doorway to the Garden of Eden. From Tsipori, this is Arie O'Sullivan reporting for the Media Line.